Hi everybody. It's time to sew with Regina. Wow, the other show we just did went by so fast. But I changed my outfit a little bit because I do want to express that I am a Christian. I go to church. I read the Bible. I may mention Jesus once in a while in the show and I hope it doesn't offend anyone. But this hat that I'm wearing kind of goes with my t-shirt that I explained to you before that had the cross on it. I, if you didn't see it, it had a big hole in it and I had to put a applique on it. So I do wear this with this hat. But anyway, um, I showed it in the last show. This hat, I had it for years and I had made it a long time ago. It's a beret, it's lined and I'd show it to you, but I don't want to take it off because I don't have a mirror right here to redo it. And what happened was the berets came back in style years later, like 10 years, 20 years later, maybe 30 years, I don't know. Everything's so long time ago. And um, I went to pull the hat out to wear it and it had all these moth holes in it because it's wool. That's what the buttons are for. And the buttons, were my, the moth holes were my patterns for more hats because once I started wearing this, people started saying, can you make me one? Can you make me one in black with silver buttons and everything? This was the pattern that I used for all the hats. So I needed to tell you about that. Last show, we were sewing at the sewing machine. I showed you how to thread it, okay? Now, your machine's gotta be different and you need an instruction manual to know how to thread your machine but I didn't show you how to wind a bobbin. But I also didn't show you a trick that I have, which I'm gonna show you right now, because we're gonna wind a new bobbin. I have to get an empty bobbin. We have boxes of bobbins here. And we're gonna change it to gold, okay? Do I want gold with that fabric? Yeah, gold will be fine. Okay, so, I might change it back to the black again. When you're taking the thread out of the machine, do not unthread the machine. You cut it right here at the top. Okay? Take your new thread, make sure that the thread comes from the back, and we're going to tie on. This is very important for Emma to get this. Um, do we need, need more light, by the way? Does light help? Or light doesn't help? Good. Yes? Okay. So we're putting a big light on. An LED light, by the way. Okay, so it's old, which is the black, over the new, which is the gold. You make one slip. Then you do opposite. You're going to put the new over the old, the new being the gold over the black, which is the old. I hope I said that right. Excuse me. And, um... It makes a round square knot. It makes a very tight knot because all we gotta do is sit down, go to the needle, take your black thread, and pull. It goes through everything and the needle. Isn't that lovely? You want me to do it again? I will. Okay, but Actually, we're going to change it back to the, the, the black next time. So what I'm going to do is cut this gold off right here and save that thread to change it to black because I'd rather do black on this white fabric so you can really see my seams. Okay, so right now we're going to wind a bobbin. I have to take it out of the first hook because it needs to go through that first hook. It goes to number one and this little button here. It wraps around that and goes over here to the bobbin. I have an empty bobbin right here. And all of my students, all of anybody I've ever taught said, should I put the thread through one of the holes? Well, if you've got that kind of time, you go right ahead, but it's not necessary. We put it down on the machine and wrap it. One, two, three, four, five times. Make sure you have a tail to hold on to. Now we need to lock it in place. 
that turns on the bobbin mechanism. But the other thing we have to do with the machine is stop the needle from going up and down. And this also says it's bobbin time. You hold the outer wheel and loosen the inner wheel. So this is loose right now. Your needle will not go up and down. Hold on to the tie, to the, to the tail. <laughs> the tie. The tail. And press on your presser foot down here on the floor. And it's winding. I let go as soon as I saw it winding. And it was going to grab my thread. Now, we watch it as it winds. If you're busy and have to go do something else, you still got to sit here because the foot is on. So you might as well watch it. If you find it getting full in a certain area and it's thinner in another, you can hold it and put it where you want it. But most of the time it does its job all by itself. And it stops by itself also. So we cut that off and we're ready to put this in the bobbin. Don't forget to tighten up your wheel again because the machine won't sew and you'll say, what's going on? And never have this pushed over while you're sewing. It won't sew right. Okay, make sure it's off, okay? But now we're gonna change it to black because that's what I prefer to sew in tonight. What happened to my thread? It's like pulling. This stuff happens. Okay, there it is, I see it. Black on black is hard to see. Okay, so the thread comes from the back onto the first hook, and then we're gonna tie our knot again, and I know you're gonna love this. Everybody loves it, and when I do a class and I show this trick, they're all like, oh yes! Now you should know how to wind your, uh, thread your machine, but uh, this is a great time saver. And a lot of people know this because of sergers. They are so difficult to thread that we all tie on there. They seem to know to cut the threads off at the bottom when they leave. In case they brought their own threads, they always take their threads back. Okay, so we're putting their, uh, the gold, which is the old, gold and old, and put it over the black, which is the new, okay? That's our first slip. And then you put the new, which is the black, over the gold, which is the old. That's a good one. I've done it myself. And that is the shit happen. Excuse me. How does this stuff happen? You can't make this, st this stuff up. And you know what I meant to say. Okay, um, so I have a round hole. You might have to cut that, Emma. I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Okay, so, um, and you all know what I'm going to say. So if she cuts it, even if she cuts it, you'll know what I did. All right, so now we are going to be into the black. All I do is take my thread and pull. I am threaded. It went right through the needle. Okay, so we are threaded. All right, so now I'm going to do some seams for you. Um, I showed you how to wind a bobbin. Oh, this is around this. This should not be around this. Okay. And this is only for your bobbin, this button here. Your tension, there's three numbers that have lines with them. That's five, four, three. You don't want to be way up here. It's a brand new machine. You don't want to be way down there. You don't have to change this tension ever if it's a brand new machine. Now, if it's an older machine, you might have to change the tension. But when changing the tension, you would have to just work with it, okay? Um, also wanted to show you how to change a needle real quick. Um, it's real simple to do. We have a box of, in our supplies of needles. And I'm going to change the needle right quick for you. Um, most of the home sewing machines are very universal. And... Um, there's a flat side and a round side. Emma can see that, I hope. Very flat and very round. Flat and round. The flat goes in the back. Unless your machine is side to sideways, then your flat side goes on the right. 
because your thread would go from left to right, not from inside the machine out, okay? Always from out to in. I don't know if you get that, but... Okay, there's a little knob here that loosens... I'm going to unthread the needle. That This knob right here. There is a place for a screwdriver also, but we're just going to turn the knob, take the needle out, okay, easily, and we're going to put the new one in. The flat side goes in the back. All you do is put it down in the hole, get it into that hole wherever it goes. There's only one hole there. Hold it up, as push it up as far as you can. Hold it up there and tighten it. Very simple. Now we need to thread the needle again. Cut the thread. Don't wet the thread. You can wet the back of the needle if you, if you really have a problem. But it goes in very easily sometimes. Sometimes it don't. You need to cut it again. I kind of cut it at a little angle. Polyester threads are hard. But they do swell up when you wet them, so that's worse. All right, so when I get, come around this way, Emma. When I get the needle threaded, I put my finger there, and now it's stuck there. It won't come out, okay? Because sometimes when you move your hand, your hand is wrapped around the thread, and you got unthread it again, all right? So now I'm holding it here, and then I grab it with my other hand, and I'm good to go. Okay, always put it in the back. And we showed how to put the bobbin in last show. You'll have to check that out. We also have these three items at the sewing machine at all times. I need them. Don't sew with your sewing machine far away from you. That's not a good idea. Think of a machine, excuse me, Emma, that is already in a cabinet and how far away the machine is. That's all you need, or even closer if you want. You can be right on top of it. But don't have it far away from you. It makes no sense at all. And I see a lot of people that sew like that. I don't get it. Okay? So let's get it close to us so that we can see. And do we have good light? Should I bring more light over here? Are we good? Okay. All right. So we're going to do a regular seam. And um, Leslie sitting over there was a student of mine tonight, and she just loved my teaching. Am I right, Leslie? <laughs> I sure did. She sure did. And I just explained how to do seams, that's all. So I ripped these uh, little pieces of fabric. And on your machine are lines. And most of the sewing machines, um, the sewing patterns, have a 5 8 seam. So we want to be looking at that 5 8 line. And sometimes I take a piece of tape, masking tape, and put it all the way down for students that are learning so they can, you know, see the edge all the way down here. But I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, the biggest problem people have is starts and finishes when they're a brand new sewer. So, what needs to be done when you start is I put the fabric at the, first of all, put your edges together. Second, look at the 5 8 line, have your fabric all the way over, but you want to cover the hole that the needle goes in. If you have your fabric right at the edge of that hole, it'll dig, the needle will dig the fabric right down into the hole, and then you're going to have a serious problem. So we want to cover that hole, all right? Have the edge of the fabric at 5 8 Put your presser foot down, and as far as this foot, you really have to sew for a while to get the feel of the speed of the machine. It's just like driving your pedal on your gas pedal. When you get in a car and you're pulling out of a parking space or something, you don't heavily put on the gas, do you? You start out slow and then get to a point and then get to the highway and then you can let it rip, okay? You don't do that on a sewing machine either. You don't let it rip and then go. No, we start out slow. And there's no need to sew really fast. Now, I have an industrial machine at my shop. I sew fast there, but, you know, it's an industrial. And I've been sewing longer than 45 years, let me tell you. I've been sewing a long time. But anyway, um, you really have to adjust and get used to it. So take some fabric and practice, you know? So, we covered the hole, we're gonna get started. There is no need 
to take your wheel and put the needle down into the fabric. You can hit the gas and go, all right? We are not pushers, pullers, or shovers. We are just here to guide it, so we hold it lightly. We don't push it, we don't shove it, we don't pull it. It doesn't work. You're gonna break a needle, you're gonna have problems, you, it won't stitch properly. The machine knows what it's doing. It has feeders underneath this foot that feeds the foot and feeds the fabric along. You don't have to watch what the needle's doing unless you want your stitch to be right where the needle is, then you do have to look at it for top stitching and things like that. Okay, so we got it at 5 eighths. We covered the hole. I'm putting the foot down, and I'm going to get going. Oh, this is not tight enough. It's still not tight enough. Oh, Jerry. There it goes. Okay, so we're going forward. And now I went down about a half an inch. We have to backstitch. We have to secure the beginning of a seam and the end of a seam because you're getting ready to attach that bodice part to a sleeve, to a neckline, to a shoulder. If those are not secured ends, they will fall apart on you while you're handling it and putting the sleeve in and adjusting it to, to the next part. So always secure the beginning and end of a seam. And now we're gonna go in reverse. You have to push this lever down the whole time you want to be in reverse. I can't push it and then let it go. I let it go when I want to go forward. Now I'm going forward. And I'm going to the other end of this little fabric. And I'm keeping it at 5 eighths. I'm at the end. I want reverse and forward. Always lift up your foot when you're trying to get the fabric out. You cannot get it out if your foot is down. It releases the tension when the foot is up. Your tension is released and you can pull it, okay? So we're gonna cut off the old threads and like I said, I pick them up later. And then we would go to the iron and press this flat, okay? Open it up and press it flat. This is a seam. I can't open it. <laughs> okay. So instead of going over the iron, I'm just going to press this for you. Okay, with my fingers. It's called finger pressing. And a lot of quilters do that, don't they? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if I threw this in the washing machine, it would unravel, 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 unravel. Okay? It's going to fall apart in a few washings. So we need to finish the edge of the seam. Now we have a serger at the other side of the room. I might go there and serge it, but I'm not that good of a sewer, I'm brand new. So I wanna do everything on my sewing machine. Or maybe I don't own a sewer, or I don't go to a place like Make Haven that has a serger, okay? So you gotta do it on your machine. So now we are on A, straight sewing, and our length is between two and three, okay? the length of the stitch. We're still in A, but we want zigzag. All we do is move this knob right here, okay? That puts me in zigzag. Make sure that your foot has a big hole in it because the needle is gonna go from side to side. So you can't have a zipper foot on there. Um, you can't have one of these feet on. This is a very narrow foot. Um, you could definitely not have that, but you'll break the needle because it's moving from side to side. This is a zipper foot. It would hit the foot. So only when you have the big hole can you use that, okay? And we do have a lot of feet that we use on the machine. All right, so now I'm going to do zigzag on the edge. I usually keep it at two and three and about a medium width and it goes from side to side. You can stay on the fabric or you can stay on the edge. That is up to you. I kind of like to do both. I don't know, it really doesn't matter. But guess what? I sewed the seam, then I did the zigzag. Now I gotta do the zigzag on this side. Now, your garment's a lot bigger than this. That's a lot of sewing, okay? Three times you gotta sew the seam. 
So when I did years ago, when I only had a, a Singer um, portable, didn't have my industrial, didn't have my serger, is I cut off two eighths, which is a quarter of an inch, okay? And I have like a three eighths seam, all right? Then I go to the machine and I do my zigzag edge. Then this looks very professional on the outside, of course, and this gets pressed to the side, okay? You can top stitch it also, but it's only two times you're sewing, not three. Two is better than three. The next one is called a French seam, and this is used when on sheer fabrics and lingerie and gowns and men's shirts. If you ever look at the inside, and once you start sewing and stuff, you'll notice how your garments are sewn because you're into it. This time, you put wrong sides of the fabric together, not the right sides, wrong sides. Put them together. This is a very interesting seam, and I used it a lot when I didn't have a serger because it looked more professional and you're Frayed edges, even with zigzagging, this can look frayed and bad after a while. Okay, we're gonna do this French seam real quick because we are running out of time again. They're just 20 minute shows. The first one you do at 3 8 Wrong, oh, not zigzag, straight stitching. <laughs> Sorry about that. We'll start again. And we wanna back stitch and go down. And we do it at 3 8 not five eighths. We're going to back stitch. And now we trim it down to an eighth. I can't believe these shows are too short. I don't get much uh, stuff in. I brought so much stuff here tonight to show you. So God's trying to tell me something. I need to do more shows because I didn't get to show you everything I needed to show. Okay, now we put right sides together and you kind of press it with your fingers, okay? And you have the edge of that seam on the edge, okay? And we're going to sew it at two eighths, which is a quarter of an inch, and it's the edge of your foot, okay? And you'll see what happens is all your edges, back stitch, all your edges, your raw edges are inside the seam. That's, oh, I didn't want to, I want, didn't want to do that. I wanted to show you what happens. I'm so sorry. I need my seam ripper. Oh, it's right here. I forgot, but I found one anyway. Okay, always take out your bobbin stitch because it is stays flat, your needle comes around it and makes a knot. So we're gonna pull this out real quick, pretty tight, okay, so that you can see the inside of the seam. But do you see how this is straight and flat? You just pull it really hard. Yeah, right, it's not doing it now. This fabric is tough. Okay, so I'm getting this out. You'll see, it's flat and straight, okay? It comes out real quick because all your raw edges, this is the right side of your fabric, right? See it? Looks like a regular seam. But all that raw stuff is inside. And that's the wrong side. See? And you press that to the side also. Thanks for joining the show. And make sure you see Time to Sew with Regina. I have a lot more to show you. Hi, everybody. We're at my shop in West Haven. I'm right near the beach. I'm a five minute walk. I go down there to see the sunrise and I love it here. It's West Haven. Not a great beach, but it's okay. But I'm on Campbell Avenue. 131 is my address. Regina's original, just making alterations. I'm closed right now, but I also have a sign down here that says check out my show on YouTube. Time to sew with Regina. 
45 years, thank you. I will do more in 24. And this is my light up sign that's on all night. We're gonna go inside now. We're gonna turn on the lights. Thank you, Emma. And this is where I work. I cleaned it all up for you guys. Um, I decorated the wall with all my years of people, sewing, friends, things I've collected over the years. Um, and these are the towels that I make. They're attached to a, uh, they're all from Dollar Tree. They're attached to a pot holder, and it takes me longer to sew on the button than it does to put it together. You just put right size. These are the pillows I make. These are for Valentine's Day. And pot is really hot right now. So I make the pot pillows. They're $7 each or two for 10. And then you can mix and match. You can do placemats, pillows, Barbie doll clothes, my chef towels, my aprons, which are right here. Oh, well, I want to show it to you anyway. I have a face mask to match it. And my aprons are totally adjustable. They will fit anyone. Okay. I love these. And this is what I love making. So it pulls up, pulls down, and you have pockets in it. Okay. So for years... I have been in business for 45 years. So years ago, I used to make SpongeBob, which she's right there, Betty Boop, Nemo, Spider-Man, Dora, and Elmo in pillows. And I did craft fairs. This was in the 80s. I made a lot of money doing this. A lot of money. But anyway... I have a hammer, I have the serger, and the third machine, this is my industrial machine, it runs a lot faster, I'm going to turn it on real quick, you'll hear how much power it has, and this is an old singer, and I do buttonholes on that one. The fitting room is right behind Emma, and this wall was painted in so many different colors, and I really didn't feel like painting. So I decided to cover it with these patterns that I got at Make Haven. It took me three hours to decorate this wall. So this is the black and white side, and this is the neutral side. Okay? And here's Barbie doll clothes. These are so cute. All it is is a tube. A tube. Okay? So they go into the uh, fitting area over here. This screen can... Oh, I had such a time. This woman gave me this reindeer. And the neck was plopping, plopping, plopping. So I kept stuffing it, stuffing it. And then I was stuffing it with a um, paintbrush. And then I looked at it and I said, this is not going to stay up. It kept going down, kept going down. So I took the paintbrush and stuck it up in there. And now it stands really nice and straight. <laughs> it's for next Christmas. Christmas is over right now. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up very soon. And February 6th is my anniversary. I've been doing this for 45 years. Um, the shows went by very quickly tonight. Uh, we were at Make Haven filming and Emma was kind enough to bring me home and put this. I meant to show you this at Make Haven. This lady donated a bunch of fabric and this fabric was only that wide and I have a long one at Make Haven that says Maker Maker. And that's what we are, is makers. I make things, I create things. Face masks, Barbie doll, pillows. I love these heart-shaped pillows, they came out really cute. And the love towel for Valentine's Day. So that's what I love to do. I make things. I sew. That's what I do. Thanks for joining my show and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Time to sew with Regina on YouTube and remember, to get in touch with me, Regina Time to Sew at Yahoo.com. Bye bye.